ฟังดูราวชาย Go Jesus and you guys still sleeping yep. one more time Go Jesus thank you now who use an Apple brand product raise your hand Uh-huh. Even I have one. Believe it or not. Thank you. Who's the founder of Apple? Steve Jobs. Okay. After Steve Jobs died, all in his life he gave one commencement talk at what university was it? Stanford. Very good. The talks that he gave that circulate around the internet. People watch the video, read it. I received probably 300 plus emails. People forwarding that talks to me. I read it over. I look at that. I watch the video. Just like every college commencement and everything you ever attend, people lie to you. They lie. They make you feel good, but they don't tell you the truth. I'm not here to condemn Steve Jobs, of course, because I'm using his product and I like it. <laughs> Actually, I have another iPhone somewhere. <laughs> But what do they do? They tell you people love to make you feel good. They go around and say, "You know what? The power is in your hands. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can change the world." Yes, to God, the power, to God, the queen, to God, the title. I tell you, come on, stop lying, man. <laughs> tell that one person in the history of the world have changed the world. Tell me one person. That's all they want, and they crucify him. Yeah. So who gave you the power to change the world? Tell me, come on, don't lie. <laughs> Now let them be really honest with the God. All the priests here, all the nuns, where they all go? <laughs> oh, the back there. Oh, they know I'm gonna call them and ask questions. That's why they sit back there today. <laughs> Come on, let us be honest. If we look back into our own lives, my life, the priest's life, your life, we know we have a lot of problems, right? And we can't even change ourselves. Am I right? We struggle with our own problems. We have a hard time to gather the power to change ourselves. What makes us think we can go and change the world? So I'm here not to lie to you, because I'm gonna tell you the truth. That yes, you are with sinners. So am I. Jesus came today. Who did he call? Did he call the holiest people on earth? No. no. Who was the name that he called today? Come on. Matthew. Matthew what did he do? Who loves to pay tax? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you see? We don't like tax collector. After he called Matthew, he spent time with the sinners. People was murmuring. They was upset. They was angry at this guy. Why did this guy eat with sinners? What did Jesus say? But I came to call them. I came to call them. So first of all, my friends, in order to be the knight of the Eucharist, we have to accept rule number one that we are sinners, and thus we should be proud because Jesus came to call us to call each and every one of you to the gift of charity, unity, fraternity, and service. You see, before you can go out and change the world, you can do the service. The first three things it has to do with your own self. You need to have an act of charity in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to learn how to be unity among yourself. Abraham Lincoln did. Uh, he said that one of the famous thing, greatest thing ever happened in this country. Tell me what he said. Come on. If a nation divides again, my goodness. <laughs> I don't you guys study U.S. history? No. No. <laughs> he 
stole that from Jesus in the Bible. He said a nation cannot stand if it's divided against itself. So as all the hips, the all the night of the Eucharist, you can set nothing. And I'm here to tell you, you can set nothing on fire unless you fire yourself up. Be charitable. Unity among yourself in your mind, in your mind, and in your mind. And by the way, for God's sake, stop complaining about the black and the blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that. We need to be brothers. The word fraternity is way beyond brotherhood, brothers. I came from the South, so everything brothers. <laughs> That's how we can go service and set the world on fire. Just like Jesus walked by and he saw Matthew today. He said, Matthew, come follow me. He walked by your life, God knows how many hundred times. He called, come on, let's follow me. And you have chosen to say no. But today, you have no choice. You already here. Because you have said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you. I know I am a sinner. But God, not you came to save. He called you to follow him, listen to his words. In just another few minutes, he invites you to come to this altar of life. The bread when you eat, you will have everlasting life. Now I know some of you have not gone to reconciliation. I strongly suggest don't be left out of the banquet. See any of the priests today, any time of your life, any moment, say, Dad, can I see you one second? The priests, I guarantee you, they will be happy to be with you. And if they're not happy, if they say that they're too busy, tell them, you go to. Father, <laughs> I want to go to heaven. I want to be with God. Tell them, you need to reconcile. And people always say, why do I have to go to confession, Father? I'm going to sin to death anyway. <laughs> well, who took a shower this morning? Raise your hand. <laughs> who took a shower yesterday? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, everybody took a shower. Why you took a shower? You're going to be dirty by the end of the day today anyway. <laughs> We know that we're sinners, but every one of us, we forget the second part of the reconciliation. Not only God clean us and forgive us, but the very important part of the sacrament is that God strengthen us and give us the courage to set the world on fire. So one more time, let me ask you, if Jesus walk by and call you today just like he did to Matthew. Come follow me. What's your answer? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Jesus.